Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I'm going to give you the latest update on this extreme pattern we're about to go into, bringing potentially still a lot of snowfall. Uh, we'll go through everything you need to know. Plus, last 24 hours has been crazy. But the West Coast is getting worse and worse. They're already having reports of landslides, even a lot of very strong winds. We even had winds of 102 yesterday even getting reports of rock slides going on. It is really severe over here in California. And it's about to get stronger. This is one of the heaviest amount of rainfall days coming with this storm system. Matter of fact, it's been increased from National Weather Service. Let me update you. Now, Florida has been having a lot of tornado reports, even down here so towards southern Florida, towards Miami area. But there was two strong tornadoes yesterday. One in Valdosta, Georgia, and one over here in northern Florida over here by Jacksonville, just like I showed you in the forecast. We even had another tornado report further to the west by Tallahassee. Plus the flooding in California. So we had San Bernardino, we had San Diego. There's been a lot of flooding and water rescues. This was put out by Marinella7772 on TikTok of San Diego. Plus, the snowfall in the Sierra was extreme. Feet of snow. And now they're telling people, shelter in place. Do not travel. It will be extremely difficult. You have major impacts coming for the snowfall. Plus, in the Sierra Nevada, above 6,000 feet, up to two feet more of snow. Now, this was reported by this person here on X, on what Twitter used to be, showing that 8 to 10 feet of snow falling in the Sierra along with 100 miles per hour wind gusts. Plus a tornado in Valdosta, Georgia, and what was going on in Florida yesterday. And here's a shot of the one towards Jacksonville in Florida. Altogether, those three tornado reports, a lot of flood reports, a lot of snow reports, a lot of rainfall reports, plus 17 landslide reports. And it did get over 900,000 without power. I posted my community tab when he had over 800,000 last night. Now sitting a little over half a million still, half a million homes without power. Now this is where the flood, this is where the train is going to hit all day and all afternoon. So this is where the power outages is going to grow plus you can see all the top 10 wind gusts from sunday and the highest was 102 miles per hour in pablo point a lot of 90s as well now there is going to be some chances for tornadoes still earlier today pretty much before noon for southern florida i will go through that real quick but you can see this train of storms coming over here for southern california as you go through today all afternoon long 10 o'clock all the way to midnight now and early in the morning, all the way about 5 o'clock before this transitions over Arizona and starts bringing y'all your flooding. Y'all need a rainfall as well, but it will be coming your way as you go through Tuesday and start bringing more heavy rainfall towards y'all. And some snow in the higher elevations. But showing just in the next 48 hours with HRRR, you still can get another 8 to 10 inches more of rainfall coming down. Now, the latest update with HRRR shows that you will get another three inches for LA, San Bernardino. A lot of the places will get one to two inches of rainfall, but LA another three, San Bernardino three, Irvin another four. Now, this is actually going to move further to the south after you go through this evening. This is where it starts going further down towards San Diego, start getting that inch plus. We also can see for the flash flooding for today, we still have that big high risk. So you got the slight risk, you have the marginal, you got the moderate, but you only got this big high risk of flash flooding. And this is in a rare alert. So it's from LA all the way past Santa Ana, and you're in the moderate all the way towards the Palm Desert, all the way past Santa Clarita. Just be aware that this is gonna be a big risk of flooding, and for tomorrow, it's gonna be be there as well as this transitions over towards Arizona brings y'all flooding and then for Wednesday it's going to calm down as it moves east. Now these storms are also bringing some chances for tornadoes as you go across the south for this morning as it moves towards noontime you're going to get some more cells down here towards the Florida Keys, southern Florida but it's also going to go towards Bahamas and bring chances for tornadoes all the way until five and six o'clock with these cells 
going into the Bahamas. Now you can see this when you look at your significant tornado perimeters reflect. It factors in many things in the model data to see where your best chance for a tornado to spin up. And you can see it is for this morning as it goes across Florida Keys. That is passing by. But as you go through the evening, it's really going to bring those threats across the Bahamas and nowhere else. Showing you do have the chance for tornadoes. It is a small green area, but there is a lot of people that live in that small green area. So here's your cities at risk and Florida for your tornado threat for today. And remember, this is a chance for the Bahamas as well. Because you can see the update with NATO cast. Matter of fact, bringing a better chance over here towards the Miami area for tornadoes for today. And look over here, the islands in the Bahamas, Western Ireland, Northern and Western, chances for tornadoes for today. So as this grows into the evening, you can see how these cells strengthen towards Nichols Town, towards Freeport, bringing you chances for these strong thunderstorms to come across and bring you chances for the tornadoes towards the Bahamas for today. Maybe even some late spin-ups for this afternoon. So you definitely need to watch themselves as this spins up right over by Port St. Lucie. Brings a lot of thunderstorms with that. It could bring some high winds with that as that's rotating around. But then as all that transitions up to the upper Midwest, brings you that little bit of that storm coming, then we're gonna have that transition still from the 10th through the 15th, bringing in chances for a Southern storm. If it meets the temperatures just right, bring in a lot of snowfall. If not, it will be bringing a lot of severe weather. Showing as it goes by for this week and it brings that storm system, it is gonna bring more winds towards the South Central, the Central Plains, towards the Great Lakes, bring it a 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gust as this storm system comes by. Now, one thing to note, HRRR is showing as this system winds up and goes on that dip to the upper Midwest and North Central, it's already bringing stronger winds than what's showing up on the Euro. Showing that we're gonna go into a strong transition and it's gonna bring a lot of 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts as it comes by Arizona, New Mexico, Northern Mexico, and goes up by Colorado and Utah. Bring a lot of strong winds with that. And also bring in some snow with it in the higher elevations of the Rocky Mountains, but not a lot for the upper Midwest. But you can see how rainfall to come is gonna bring that one to two inches over Arizona. It's gonna bring you into that flooding stage. And over here for Colorado, Utah, Nevada, bring some heavy precipitation and Idaho, Western Wyoming, as it goes towards the upper Midwest. Not bringing a lot for that snowfall for the upper Midwest, but higher elevations of Colorado, Utah, Nevada, Arizona, Idaho, Western Wyoming. A lot of potential one to two feet of snow in the higher elevations still to come. Now you can see the update with National Weather Service. What I've been screaming at y'all, we're not going into a springtime. I know we got this above average pattern all the way into our transition with the below average over the southwest. But now you can see the pattern here as we go from the 12th through the 18th. Below average temperatures really kick in all the way to the south central, all the way across the southeast. This white is your average temperatures, and you're going to be above average for the upper Midwest. You're going to be spring-like in the north, and it's going to be still be our winter across the south and the southeast. But another thing that this pattern is going to bring is below average precipitation in all of this brown region. And it will be above average for this green and Florida. And you can see the latest information on your data that we are going into that trough, that EPO on our west coast, going into a trough all the way towards the 20th. Maybe even coming deeper. This is starts leaving you confidence when it leaves this dark area. This green line is your average. And still showing we have that potential trough coming down in the beginning of March. That could be another potential extreme system with a big warm up, cold air, maybe a southern snowstorm. And you also can see with your AO, your Arctic Oscillation, that cold air is going to continue to come on down. All the way from the 12th all the way to the 20th. So if it don't come down with that trough and meet with the cold air in the beginning from the 12th through the 15th, still has a better chance, which is trending with the ensemble, as a matter of fact, of meeting with the cold air from the 15th through the 20th, bringing a potential big snowstorm, still bringing that potential whopper. So as we take a closer look at this transition, first we get that storm that's going towards the Great Lakes, towards the upper Midwest. You can see this right here. That's going to be that storm coming through. Bringing a lot for the higher elevations, not bringing a lot for everybody else. Then we're going to get that deep trough, bring that transition all the way from the 12th. There it is on clockwork, bringing that towards the southeast, maybe even going up towards the northeast with a second piece for the 13th and going towards the northeast for the 14th, potentially bringing us that snowstorm. 
So we look at the different models and see how they're coming together so far with the data. You can see right here on the euro as you go into that trough on the 11th, that's when it starts getting that so far above average warm up with this system and you can see this with the euro because the euro showed a good snowfall matter of fact the control member is still showing this but the latest run shows it will be chasing the cold air that blue line is at the higher elevations as that moves out through the northeast now take in mind this is still seven days away from this point right here still too far to even give you an accurate forecast things change in about three to four days but when you check with the gfs you see the gfs still sees it a little bit further to the north meeting up somewhere with the cold temperatures bringing some snowfall with that as it goes out through the 13th still showing that stronger system building up just like it showed with the euro that second one towards the northeast potentially bringing that snowstorm a lot of heavy snow with that now you can see this with the Euro Ensembles as well for the shot for the Great Lakes. Next 10 days, potentially bringing a good snowstorm. And not just for those 25, you can see the other 25 members, a little half of hit and miss. But once you go past 10 days and we go into this transition, this is where the snow is going to start adding up in all the ensembles. Showing a better chance for a widespread foot snowstorm coming your way within the next 10 days. This is all of the ensembles. It's about at a 50-50, pretty much a bust or a banger. And once you go past 10 days, you can see that snow is going to start adding up potentially as we go into this next transition. Still showing with a control member of the Euro as we go from the 6th through the 16th. We will be getting this transition of this nice snowstorm. And after that, maybe again in the same area. And then maybe after that, a little bit further to the north as we go towards the end of February, the beginning of March as that goes out. It all depends as we meet up with these temperatures. So, so far on Sunday morning, it is bringing some freezing temperatures, not really far to the south. And it is bringing those nasty wind chills, even negative wind chills in the Rocky Mountains. Also for the four corners of southwest and the upper Midwest. Very cold wind chills, even feel like 20 across the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley. Now your highs will go right back up for that very same day. This is going to be the biggest problem for this storm to happen for Monday on the 12th. Cold temperatures coming right back down again, even freezing temperatures towards Texas. And with your wind chills, this is going to be one of your coldest days as this transition happens, bringing a lot of 20 feels like temperatures across a lot of the U.S. Even a higher elevation still feel like negative 10, negative 20 something degree wind chills. Now it will warm right back up again on the 12th. This is once again going to be the biggest problem of this snowstorm. As you go through the 13th, here it comes down again with those freezing temperatures. Here it comes again with these cold wind chills. This is all the way until Tuesday now. But once again, that's going to warm right back up again. So if there is any snowfall coming in this region, I believe you will see it, but it won't last long. And you also can see when you check the update that we're going to stay in this above average bubble while we get that below average temperatures kicking in for the southwest. And then we're going to be in that transition for the end of February. You can see the below average did kick in for the Great Lakes, upper Midwest, intercoastal northeast at that time as we get that cold air coming in, bringing that chance for that heavy snow. Now, the end of February going into March, we're going to be a normal March a little bit below average temperatures that's going to hang around as we go through. Remember, there's still no Arctic air coming with this blast. And just like clockwork, as you go towards the middle to end of March, the below average temperatures are going to move away and we're going into our normal spring. Now, let's go through the winners of these weather stations because y'all literally really wanted them almost 3,000 comments. So first for this weather station, the one where your word was solar. And we had over 1,481 in the comments. And our winner is Becky Graham, 6253. Congratulations, you are the winner of that weather station, Solar. I have bees and a garden, and this would be a great help. Thank you, Weatherman Plus. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and being a subscriber to my channel. I will tell you in a minute just how you can go about getting your prize. Now we have this weather station and the word was radar. And we actually had over a thousand radars, a thousand and eighty eight. And our winner is Seaside Witcher. Congratulations. You are the winner of that weather station. Thank you, Mark, 
Radar. Thank you so much once again for being with my channel and being a subscriber. I appreciate every single one of y'all. And once again, I will tell you in a moment how you can get your prize. And finally, we have the weather station display. In my opinion, I think this is a, one of the best parts. You can just put this anywhere. You don't need to hook anything up and you get your reading of what's going on in your area. But once again, the word was weather station. <laughs> and we actually only had 902 of those. So everybody definitely wanted the first weather station the most. And the winner is Vivica Carlson, 4554. Congratulations, you are the winner of the Weather Station. Weather Station, you can't get no simpler than that. Thank you so much for being a part of my channel. Now, to all of you that have won, you must contact me by my email, weathermanplustoday at gmail.com. Give me your address, give me your name so I can send this right to you. Thank you again for being part of my channel. And remember, everyone, don't give up just yet. If I don't hear from any of these people or whichever ones I don't hear from, I will be pulling another name on tomorrow's video. So this is really a 24-hour response time. But thank you so much for your time. I hope this update has helped you. I pray that God does restore your power. Any loss that any of you may have endured as you're going through the storm or may endure still while we're dealing with this system. I pray for every single one of you to be okay. Now, before you go, Ecclesiastes 3, 10 through 15. This is Daniel speaking. I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. That which hath been is now. And that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is past. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I will keep you updated. Be safe in all this weather. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope the best for you, you and your family, every single day of your life and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have a great day and be safe, everybody.